In John chapter number 8, verse number 1, the Bible says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Now, can I say that verses 1 and 2 is a continuation of chapter number 7 where he had been teaching and then every man went to his house and he went to the Mount of Olives. He didn't have a house to, to go to or a stone to pillow his head. But while he's on the Mount of Olives, what's he doing? He's communing with the Father. He's uh, uh, refreshing himself in the Spirit. And then the next morning he goes uh, to the temple and he begins to teach all the people. Can you imagine sitting under Jesus' teaching? Hmm? No man ever spoke like he spoke. And they would flock to him to hear him. And verse number 3 says, And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Let me just stop right there. If the Bible says it, doesn't that settle it? I get that all the time. Well, the Bible says this. What do you think? Don't matter. But make certain you rightly divide the Bible. Let's read on. The Bible says this. Verse 6, This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. It's a blessing seeing those young people up singing, praising the Lord. God, we thank you for the good special singing. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for allowing our folks to go into the jail and preach the gospel there. Thank you for being a good God. And Father, I pray for the next few minutes. You'd sit down amongst us. You'd put a hedge about us. You'd bind the powers of hell. And God, you would begin to speak. And God, you'd do an eternal work in our midst today. God, do unusual things in our midst today. And God, above all, I pray if there be anybody amongst us lost without Christ, today would be the day of their salvation. Now, Father, meet every need of every heart. Lord, it's good to see the colonel. I pray for Brother Ed. God, you'd touch him and help him. I pray for Sister Crystal, and I pray for Brother Don and the children. You'd touch them and help them. I pray for Brother Jay, Brother Bobby, you'd help them. Others that are sick, God, you'd be with them and help them. But now, for the next few minutes... I'm interested in the sick soul. And God, anybody whose soul is not right with thee, I pray before the final amen, they'd get that made, uh, taken care of and made right. Father, bless as only you can. Use this unworthy vessel. Help us from the scriptures. And Father, we'll thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful and lovely name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. As a way of introduction to this text, and I've got several things to bring out, I want you to notice, first of all, we find the corrupted. In verse number 3, we find the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they'd set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Uh, 
We uh, uh, find a woman who is corrupted, a woman who is sinful, a woman who has done wrong, uh, a woman who has broken the law. We find uh, this woman uh, is accused uh, of committing adultery. Uh, they said they uh, caught her in the very act. Uh, uh, we find uh, the corrupted. Uh, notice she is caught. Uh, Again, they have taken her in the very act of adultery. Uh, now, uh, I, I, I don't have time to get on this, but somebody set this thing up. Hmm? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, who in the world is going to be sitting there waiting for this to happen and uh, be there to witness it and take her in the very act? She's been caught. She's been set up. Uh, all of this... Uh, is part of a bigger plot. Uh, by the way, uh, those things still happen today. Uh, there's a lot of things that hit the news media. It's just part of a bigger plot. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in this country that is corrupt, uh, that is wicked, uh, and it's all for a certain demise. Uh, and the demise uh, is to break our country, break freedom, break democracy, uh, and it's all designed by the devil to hurt the church. Uh, did you hear what Trump said this past week? Uh, if he is put back in as president, uh, uh, that Christianity must be restored to America. What a blessing to hear somebody say that uh, on a national scene uh, uh, because this country without the church uh, uh, has no hope, my dear friends. Uh, and trust me, when they want to hire 87,000 uh, 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 IRS agents to go after uh, nonprofits, they're going after the church. Mm. But I got good news. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Mm. But we find uh, the corrupted. We find the caught. Verse number four. We find uh, uh, she's condemned. Look at verse number five. Now Moses in the law commanded us that, should, uh, that she should be stoned. She's condemned. They're referring to Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 10. Under the law, Moses was inspired to pin down any person caught in the act of adultery, both the man and the woman, were to be put to death. Hmm? Cut and dry. That's what the law said. That's what they're saying. We see the corrupted, the caught, the condemned. But notice the cause for the interruption of Jesus' teaching. Now think about it. Jesus is teaching. Jesus has spent time with the Father, comes down, has got a message. He's teaching. All these crowds come to hear him teach. Uh, and here come the scribes and the Pharisees uh, who ought to respect uh, 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 the temple who ought to respect the fact somebody's teaching the word of God uh, uh, who ought to know better uh, they bust in and they interrupt everything that's going on can I say there are some people that don't care about what God wants they're interested in their selfish means but let us notice the cause for the interruption look at verse 5 again we find that now Moses in the law commanded us uh, that such should be stoned but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. Can I say the whole setup, the whole thing with this woman, uh, all of it was plotted uh, that they could bring him before Jesus so they could find something to accuse him about. You know why? He was a threat to them. Let's just call them the swamp. You see, the Pharisees, uh, 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 they quoted Moses that she should be stoned, but see, the Pharisees had come up with their own legal system. And the scribes were lawyers too. And see, uh, they would change things for the times that would benefit them, but really didn't care what the law said because they didn't live by the law. And they hated Jesus because every time he spoke, he reminded them of it. He called them things like a generation of vipers. He called them a bunch of snakes. He called them whited sepulchers full of dead men's bones. He said, you're nothing but a grave. You look good on the outside, but you're dead and empty on the inside. I mean, he just uh, didn't play with them. He let them know the truth. So the cause of this interruption, they didn't care about his teaching. They didn't care about folks getting help. They didn't care about folks getting to God. They cared about getting him 
off the scene. If they had to have him indicted many times and have all his earthly goods taken from him, which he had none, they'd do whatever it took to get him off the scene. Hmm? We see the cause of this whole event. Notice, if you will, the counteraction. What does Jesus do? Well, look at verse 6. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Hmm? So what's Jesus do? Well, he acts like he don't even hear them. And he just starts writing on the ground. And they keep pressing him and pressing him and pressing him. And he looks up and says, Ye that's without sin, let him first cast a stone at him. And he goes back to writing. Hmm? Notice, if you will, this was very unusual. I mean, they point blank to ask him a question in front of everybody. They are tempting him in front of everybody. And he just starts writing on the ground. It's unusual. I'm going to say it's unnatural. Can I say the natural thing is always to defend ourselves? He didn't say anything about it. Can I say it was very unexpected? They thought they had him. He just kept writing on the ground. Well, let's look at the results of that. It brings conviction. Look in verse number 9. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Now, I don't know what he wrote. But I tend to believe what he started doing is he started writing their sin and the law attached to what should happen with their sin. You say, why, preacher? Because when they saw their sin and saw what they deserved, all of a sudden it was time for them to leave. And from the eldest down to the last, they came and they saw their sin, the penalty for their sin, and they said it was time to go. Notice nobody picked up a stone. Hmm? They heard it, it brought conviction. You know what the Word of God does? It convicts us. It shows us where we are and where we ought to be. We see the conviction. Now notice uh, the conversing. Look at verse number 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? That's very important right there. He converses with her and says, Woman, where are your accusers? And then he says, Hath no man condemned thee? Notice what she says. She said, no man, Lord. She said, no one's condemned me. No one has brought charges against me before the, before the law, before the court. Notice the converting. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now, Jesus acknowledged that she'd been a sinner. And Jesus helps her with that and tells her, go and sin no more. But Jesus did not condemn her. Now, why didn't he? 
He told the men as he's writing on the ground, Ye that are without sin, first cast a stone at her. The only one that could cast a stone at her was him. He was the perfect, sinless, holy Son of God. Well, Jesus came to fulfill the law, did he not? In order to save you and I, somebody had to keep the law. That was him. And he took the handwriting of ordinances uh, that were contrary to us, the parts of the law we could have never kept. He nailed them to his cross, taking them out of the way, uh, and he became our propitiation, our sacrifice. So Jesus had to fulfill the law. The law said anyone caught in the act of adultery should be stoned. How come he didn't stone her? How come he didn't condemn her, Brother Phil? Did Jesus break the law? If he did, he can't be our Savior. God forbid he didn't break the law. Here's where you need to study. Here's where Jesus knew more than they knew. In Numbers 5.13, the Bible says that if somebody is, uh, 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 commits adultery, but there are no witnesses, they can't be stoned. Jesus said, where are thine accusers? He says, is there no man to condemn thee? She said, no man, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn thee. He said, you don't have any accusers. Uh, therefore, you don't, I'm not going to stone you because of Numbers 5.13. Uh, go and sin no more. Uh, aren't you glad the Lord knows uh, better than we know? Uh, aren't you glad even though she deserved uh, uh, to be stoned, she did not get stoned uh, uh, because the Lord showed compassion uh, and he knows the word of God. Now, when we think of miracles in the Bible, we think of him feeding the 5,000. We think of the woman with the issue of the blood. We think of blind Bartimaeus getting his sight. We think of him raising Lazarus from the dead. We think of all the great miracles he did. But when you think of miracles, do you ever think about this woman? And I say there is a true miracle in John chapter 8. This woman should have been taken out in stone, but she didn't get stoned. Why? I'm going to preach for just a few minutes on the miracle of salvation. The miracle of salvation. Hmm. Can I say that every one of us, from the pulpit to the back pew, we were born sinners. Hmm. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Nobody's righteous. Say, preacher, I go to church, I give a tithe. Preacher, I witness. Preacher, I, I do this, I do that, I do that. Still your righteousness is as filthy rags. Outside the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no one righteous. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can I say the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Can I help you with something? You have failed the glory and grace of God even this very day. We've all sinned. We're sinners. Hmm? Can I say this? Uh, Galatians 3.22 says, But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin. We were all under the condemnation of sin. So he might as well establish the fact, just like this woman caught in the act of adultery, uh, we were guilty. Right. Amen. Can I say we were born in sin? Psalms 51.5 says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Right. We were born in sin. Can I say we were bound by sin? Just like the madmatic Gadara who was possessed with many demons, uh, some say as many as a thousand because his name was Legion, uh, 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 they would chain him to the tombs uh, even though those demons caused him 
break the chains. He was bound by those fetters. We were bound by sin. Mark 5, 4, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. We were bound by sin. No man could tame us. There was no program that would help us. There was no way that we could quit our sinning and get away from our wicked ways. We were bound by it. And can I say, we were broken because of sin. We were broken towards God. We had no relationship with God, no way to get to God. Our sin controlled us. We were sinners. We were guilty. Can I say this? Every one of us had a sentence. This woman brought before uh, that crowd there had a sentence. Uh, under the law, she was to die. Can I say we had a sentence? Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. We had a death sentence. Can I say uh, Ezekiel 18.20 says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. We had a death sentence. Uh, we stood condemned to die. We could speak no defense, just like this woman. Uh, she was caught in the act of adultery. She offered up no defense. Uh, there is nothing we could stand before God and say anything to merit His favor. Can I say of a surety, we deserve the punishment, just like her. We were sinners. We had a sentence. But thanks be unto God, Someone shared the gospel with us. The gospel, the good news. Sinners don't have to die in their sin. There has been a Savior. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, and He came and He died for our sins like they sang about. Uh, and He was buried. Uh, and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures uh, with the good news uh, that He conquered sin. Uh, and He conquered death. Uh, and He conquered hell. Uh, and sinners that look to him could live uh, we could be saved from our sins uh, you don't have to die uh, as a sinner uh, this woman uh, surely thought she was going to die that day uh, but by the time she met the master uh, everything had changed uh, hey I want to tell you something uh, uh, by the time I met the master uh, my life had changed uh, I blessed the Lord uh, that somebody cared enough uh, to share the gospel with me. Uh, you know what we're to do? Share the gospel with others. Uh, we were sinners, had a sentence, someone shared the gospel. And today, if you're saved, you submitted unto Christ. Can I say you, you conceded your need of salvation? This woman knew she needed some help that day. Amen. Yes, sir. When somebody shared the gospel with you, you realized you was a sinner. Uh, you realized you had a death sentence. Uh, you realized you couldn't save yourself. Uh, uh, you conceded the fact uh, uh, that you needed salvation. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, then you confessed your sins. You came to Jesus uh, and you asked him to save you. Uh, you confessed you was a sinner. Uh, you said, I need to be saved. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, he came seeking to save that which was lost. Uh, can I say, you called on the Savior. Uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, I had a death sentence. Uh, as a sinner, uh, I deserved to die and go to hell. Uh, but somebody told me about Jesus. Uh, and when I called on him, uh, he saved me. Uh, and he changed me. Uh, I'm no longer a sinner. Uh, I've been made a child of God. Uh, I'm a saint today. Uh, what a blessing to be saved by the good grace of God. Uh, you say, what happened? Jesus saved us. Hmm? Now, can I say, I don't understand everything about what happened. Next month, I'll be saved 50 years. For 50 years, I've been trying to figure out what happened that night I got saved. I don't understand it all. But I do understand some things. Can I say, when I called on him, he forgave all my sins. 
all my past sins, all my present sins, all my future sins, they've all been forgiven. What a blessing. Uh, I'm glad I'm saved today. Uh, I'm glad that sin and that guilt's been rolled away because I've been saved. Uh, he forgave me of my sins. Uh, but not only that, he washed away my sins. Uh, that royal, righteous, red, redeeming blood that he shed on Calvary, uh, he washed my sins. And though they were scarlet, uh, and though they were black before God, uh, they have been made white as snow, uh, white as wool. Uh, he forgave me of my sins, uh, and he washed away my sins. Uh, John said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, my sins aren't behind his back. Uh, my sins aren't as far as the east is from the west. Uh, that was Old Testament economy. Uh, my sins are gone. Uh, they've been eradicated. Uh, they're gone by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, Hey, I don't understand it all, uh, but I know he forgave me of my sins. Uh, he washed away my sins. Uh, then he sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, that day I got saved. Uh, I didn't know what was happening, Colonel, uh, but the Spirit of God, uh, he did a supernatural operation down on the inside of me. Uh, he moved in. Uh, and he sealed me. Uh, and the Bible says that inner man sitteth not. Uh, this old flesh is still rotten. Uh, it still fails the grace of God. Uh, but that soul which God saved that day 50 years ago, uh, he sealed it. Uh, and it's as fresh and pure as the day he saved it. Uh, I bless the name of the Lord. Uh, he saved me. Uh, and he washed me. Uh, and he forgave me. Uh, and he sealed me. Uh, then he robed me. Uh, he robed me in his righteousness. Uh, hey, uh, when you look at me, you see an old sinner. Uh, when he looks at me, he sees himself. Because uh, I've been robed in his righteousness. Uh, I don't understand that. Uh, I just know I'm not standing before him in my guilt uh, or in my filthy righteousness. Uh, I stand before him clean and pure. Uh, robed in his righteousness uh, can I say this uh, when he saved me he raised me uh, in newness of life uh, I was dead to God I was a sinner uh, I was dead in trespasses and sins uh, but he saved me uh, and he forgave me uh, and he washed me uh, and he sealed me uh, and he robed me uh, and he raised me uh, in newness of life uh, hey uh, I got born again, uh, and he saved me in newness of life. Uh, I just started living 50 years ago, uh, and I'll never die, because uh, he gave me eternal life. Uh, hey, blessed be his holy name. Uh, can I say after he raised me, uh, I found out uh, that he birthed me into the family of God. Uh, I am of the lineage of Jesus Christ. I've been born again, birthed into the family of God. I'm part of the family. Hallelujah. Huh? And for that crowd that thinks they can lose their salvation, uh, hey, uh, your family may disown you, but you'll never not be a part of your family. Mm. I'll never not be a part of the family of God. Matter of fact, Jesus said, I'm in his hand, and his hand's in the Father's hand, and no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. I'm a man. If I lost my mind and tried to jump out, I couldn't even get out. Because I'm in. What a blessing. But not only did he birth me into the family of God, I found this. I don't understand it all, Brother Jim, but I found out he also adopted me into the family of God. Uh, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I've not only been birthed into the family, I've been adopted into the family. You know what? Under, under the law, if you adopted a child, Brother Brian, you could cut your own children out of the inheritance, but you can't cut an adopted child out of the inheritance. Uh, can I say? Amen. Hallelujah. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Hey, the Jews were God's chosen people. They turned their back on him. Uh, hey, they're going to miss out on the inheritance. Uh, only the ones that have been born again uh, in this dispensation is going to heaven. Uh, but hey, uh, 
I got adopted into the family. Uh, I didn't deserve, I was old Gentile dog. Uh, I don't deserve anything that God has, uh, but I'm going to get everything that he has. Uh, I don't understand it all, but I learned I was birthed into the family, adopted into the family, and one of these days I'm going to be married into the family. Huh? At the marriage supper of the Lamb. Huh? Do you realize there are only three ways you can get in a family? Born into a family, adopted into a family, married into a family. And I got all that in Christ. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. There you go, huh? I don't know it all. I just know he saved me. He forgave me, washed me, sealed me, raised me, robed me, birthed me, adopted me. Yeah. But he also recorded my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Huh? Can I say, anybody that's not in that book going to go to the great white throne judgment and then be sentenced on off the lake of fire. I'm in that book. And God don't have any erasers. What a blessing. My name's been recorded in the book. I found out some other things. I don't understand it all. But I also found after he recorded me, uh, he changed me. I didn't know he changed me. But he did. I, I mean, the day after I got saved, because I got saved at night, the, the next day the sky looked bluer than it ever looked. Sure. I had the same eyeballs looking at the same sky, but it looked different. The grass looked different. I was different. I not only was clean, I felt clean. I, I couldn't wait to tell people what happened to me. Right. Used to, they had to drag me to church. Yeah. Now I drug them to church. Used to, uh, the songs were just songs. Now the songs had meaning. Yeah. Used to, preaching was long. Now it wasn't long enough. Right. Huh? What happened? He changed me. Hey, I used to not have any desire for the things of God. Now I had a, thing, a desire for the things of God and a dislike for the things of the world. Huh? Amen. Amazing thing. What happened? Jesus saved me. Huh? I thought about this. I don't understand it all. But I know when he saved me, he enamored me with love. I love people. Even people that deserve to be stoned. I still care about their soul. He gave me a love I didn't have the things of God and the people of God and the word of God he gave me a joy I'd never known See, this world seeks joy and at best all he finds happiness joy comes from the Lord and the joy of the Lord is our strength he gave me a joy I mean the only thing that comes close to the joy of the Lord is getting a grandbaby huh? but there's nothing like the joy of the Lord can I say this? He gave me hope. Amen. Before I got saved, I didn't think about eternity. And had I, I wouldn't have wanted to think about eternity. But now I have a hope. Amen. I'm looking forward to eternity. Because what's out yonder is a whole lot better than what's around here. Amen. Mm. I have a hope. I have a hope he's coming back. He could come back today and take us home. And I say that he enamored us with a sense of cleanness. We desire a holy life, a clean life, a righteous life. Now, we, we may fall short, but we desire that. And if we step in a mud puddle, we want to get it cleaned off. First John 1, 9, confess our sins. He's faithful and just forgive us, cleanse us. Well, we have a sense of cleanness, we want to live a clean life. Huh? I'm enamored with peace. Let me help you something. It don't matter who gets in the White House. The Lord's one sets up the kings anyway. It don't matter who gets in the White House. I'm going to still do my part and vote and be a good citizen, but it don't matter. Because I know who sits on the throne. And I have a peace. Things going on is not happening by accident or chance. Everything's lining up with the scriptures. In order for 
America to succumb to a one world of government, America can't be the America she's always been. And in the last three years, there's been a great attack on her to cease being what she's been. Uh, so how does that affect you? I have a peace. And you know when I got the greatest peace? Well, I learned to turn Fox News off. Because they lie to you too. Huh? Some of y'all got too many stakes and paying too much attention to things that you shouldn't pay attention to. How many of you heard it was going to snow Saturday? Where's it at? Huh? Well, it snowed in Canada, so we got the forecast right. I'd have more respect for somebody that comes on there and says, I don't have any idea what's going to happen. But whatever happens is the will of God. Y'all remember, what was the name? Pat, uh, the guy that was the di disc jockey in the 70s, and he went on, he did the weather on Channel 5. He wasn't a weatherman, but he didn't care. You know, and he just had a good time. And I liked him. But all these guys got all these Doppler degrees. They're all dumber than a box of rocks. And you watch all that, you're going to get all upset. You're going to go buy shovels and salt that you don't need. I've told you for years, it only snows when they don't forecast it. God winks at their ignorance is what he does. Huh? What I'm saying is, I have a peace regardless of what the news says, regardless of what the sports teams do. Zachary, have you all won a game yet this year? Uh, and what are you UK fans laughing at? Your team stinks. You ain't got a coach worth a flip. Huh? Really? Used to, this area was the great hub for college basketball. Here and down there in Tobacco Road, North Carolina. Say amen, Aiden. All right. Well, all I can say is every team in this region stinks. And that's why some of you are foul every Sunday. Your team got beat. You can expect that. But you ought to have a peace regardless of what your team does. At least you're not a Virginia fan. I just have a peace. Because I know the Prince of Peace. Now just like this woman, I deserve to die. But when Jesus confronted me about my sin and let me know he'd saved me from it, and I called on him, he was true to his word, he saved me. And he changed my life, and he told me the same thing, go in sin no more. And can I say, my life's been different. This woman, she didn't deserve his kindness. She didn't deserve his grace, and she didn't deserve his mercy. But she got it anyway. We didn't deserve the death he died. We don't deserve his kindness, his long suffering, his grace, or his mercy. But he offers it anyway. And he tells us, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. We should run from this place and tell every sinner we come in contact with, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. My question for you today is, are you saved? I didn't ask you if you was good. I didn't ask you if you was faithful. I didn't ask you about your works. Can you go back to a place where you met Jesus? This woman can go back to that place. I can go back to the place where I met him. 
Can you go back to a place where you called on the Lord and asked Him to save you? If not, this whole message might be for you today. During the invitation, why don't you come call on the Lord? He loves you. You don't deserve Him. But He loves you anyway. And He'll save you and change your life if you'll accept Him as your Lord and Savior. If you're here today and you're saved, you don't deserve what you have in Christ. But you sure ought to appreciate it. And you ought to live for Him. And you ought to let others know, I don't deserve what I have, but I got it, and you can have it too. It's found in Jesus. Do you know Him today? If not, why don't you come and trust in Him? It's all stand, Brother Clint. You come get a song of invitation. When's the last time you told somebody else about him? When's the last time you appreciated the miracle of salvation? You know it's only a miracle that you wasn't raised somewhere where the gospel's not even preached. It's only a miracle you're not a Hindu. You're not in some other cult. You heard the gospel and got saved. You ought to come thank the Lord for it. If you're here today and you're not saved, why don't you come? We'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the miracle of salvation. Lord, so undeserved, but so greatly appreciated. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. And certainly convict and save that one nearest hell. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.